if this is very new to you, then a lot of this is just going to go right over your head because I'm not going to talk a lot of basic stuff because I want to try and bring as much value to you as possible. So those first, what I call seven tips on how to get started with Facebook ads if you're looking at the slide, those first seven tips are basic. I'm not going over those. Developing your strategy, choosing your objectives, um, how to do a target audience. We're going to talk about uh, you know more advanced types of audiences. You know different placements. Um, you know allocating budgets. Um, different types of ad format: photo, video, multiple photos. Um, how to track your ads. Um, I, I consider those basic. I want to point out quite a few things that a lot of you are missing when you're doing Facebook ads. Now, I also want to caveat that there's a plethora of different types of ads that you can do and different sources that you can put your ads onto. I'm, I'm a very big proponent in uh, the ads that you should be doing are based off of the uh, things that are happening within Facebook alone and not necessarily setting up a pixel and retarget and do those things. And you're going to see why in, in a moment. And essentially it breaks down to you're wasting a lot of money, um, whether you're using X company or just because you can do it in a lot better way. And you can do it the way that Jay talked about just right now, which is really uh, grasping that true client and everything about them. So then that way you can get more clients that way, right? Wouldn't everybody want to work with more people that want to work with them? As opposed to the ads, um, again, that are, that are going on. So three months ago, Facebook changed a lot of the way that they do ads. About six months ago, they started it, but three months ago, it was drastic. And there's good and there's bad to that. The bad is, it's no longer easy. The good is, since it's no longer easy, the people that know how to do it can do it better, and they can do it a, a lot more, and their budgets are gonna be used um, better. That first, that first uh, screenshot is essentially just showing you the ads manager, um, all of the different things that you can click into and whatnot, but the first one that we're going to talk about uh, is audiences. And when you go into audiences in your Facebook ad manager, a lot of people like to set up their audiences again based off of activities that are happening on their website. Now you can totally do that, but I'm not talking about that because I think that with all of the new features that Facebook ads has uh, Release not only within Facebook, but within Instagram. Anything that I talk about could be in Facebook and Instagram, just so you know. Somebody asked me, are you doing an Instagram ad class? Same thing. So when you, when you go into audiences and you go into create audiences, you're gonna see that I, I, that I created a couple. There's one that's called Realtor Likes, one that's called TF, one that's called Luxury Real Estate, HB. Essentially, what I'm just trying to show you there is that um, you can create an audience based off of whatever you want. You know, me getting all your emails, subscribing to my list, you're not going to see ads when you go home that says, don't forget about your referral partner from Huntington Beach. Why? Because now I can set up ads and I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? If there's somebody that does send me a referral, right, I can now change the algorithm within Facebook to go, hey, look, for whatever reason, I, you know, I don't have the answer to everything, but Facebook and Google and all these other people do, for whatever reason, this person keeps sending me referrals, I'm giving them a 10, and everybody else has a 5. And that's called lifetime value. And, and that's one of the biggest things that they, they introduced. And I'm gonna go very high depth in that because I think that that's where a lot of people are missing the true ability within Facebook ads. But you can see there's different types of audiences that you can create. You can create an audience based off of a customer file. That's uh, email addresses. If you have email addresses of past clients, that's, that's an ad group. If you have email addresses of Whoever, that could be a, uh, an, an audience. And instantly, if you were to cl click customer file, you would just upload your emails, and it'll give you an option. And that option is, do you want to create a lookalike audience? So a lookalike audience is essentially 
Any audience that you originally created, Facebook will take that audience and break it up, okay? Meaning if I said, I want, you, here's 100 past clients, that, that's my customer file, create a lookalike audience of the top 25% of said audience that went to my Facebook page. Okay, great, there's, there's a new one, right? Or you can do, here's, this half of the room sends me all their email addresses, I put it in, now create a lookalike audience like all these. Well, for the most part, it'll also include all these people, even though I didn't have their email addresses. Why? Because all of your real estate professionals, you guys kind of search and do things somewhat the same as this side of the room. So without having this side of the room's information, I can grab it by saying, here's my custom audience, now make me a lookalike that looks like, you know, your search behaviors, your everything. Website traffic, again, audience is based off website. Who's clicking on what? Who's spending the most time on my website? Um, who's, who's not spending the most time on my website? Those are huge, okay? Um, app activity, I've never done, so I can't talk about that. Offline activity is uh, essentially what you can do is if people are coming into your store, or whatever, you can create uh, ads to those people. They don't really apply to us. Engagement, uh, I'm gonna skip over for now because to me that's the most important one. Um, and the, the reason that I think it's the, uh, the most important one is again, because when you see me create this audience based off engagement, all of that is saying is create an audience based off of everything that's happening within your Facebook business page. Who's liking what, who's commenting on what, who's watching 25% of your videos, who's watching 50% of your videos, who do, who do you think likes all your stuff, but actually they hate all your stuff? Like, those are the types of things that you can do um, within the actual engagement. And if you go to the next slide, it'll, and, and if you were to click on engagement, it would open up this next slide. And again, it's based off of videos, it's based off of uh, lead forms, but the two that I'm talking about are the Facebook page and the Instagram business profile. How, but just like I, I said earlier, they're the exact same thing. So I'm gonna say Facebook page, but if you were to click Instagram business, who's who's on your Instagram page? Who's there stalking your kids? You know, whatever it may be, like all of that, they already have that data. You don't have to go out and buy X amount of leads. What do you want to use to create this audience? So it says video, lead form, full, full screen experience, Facebook page. So if you were to click on Facebook page, that's gonna bring you up, I'm on now page 10, create a custom audience. And, and these are the things that you have to do like yesterday, so then that way your ads are gonna work in a few months. I'll repeat that, these things have to be set up because you have to get the data. For you guys to go out there and buy ads, you're just buying ads based off of somebody else's data. That's not your true client. That's not the people that are engaging with your stuff. That's not the people that you want to work with. That's, that's data that's, let's put all these people together and say, okay, that's the real estate data. Let's run ads based off the real estate data. But for your ads to be phenomenal, to go through your own pages, you need to go in and create custom audiences. They're free to do, you need to do it, and it's gonna take about 24 hours before it'll give you your numbers, uh, and it'll tell you. Um, if I clicked on create a custom audience and it says people who viewed at least three seconds of your video, it's going to give you an estimation, okay? Uh, and that estimation is going to be based off of that second screenshot, which is a, a, another layer to it. So if you go into create the custom audience, again, you can change it. You know, do I want to create a custom audience uh, based off of people for the last year? for the last month, for the last six months. Maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's 2019, and you're doing something differently over the course of these two months as opposed to uh, the way that you did it last year. Well, you want to create an, an audience based off of that. If you're making drastic changes in your marketing, drastic changes um, just in the way your business runs, you need to change the audiences. The reason that you need to change the audiences is because if you're still using the data from, hey, this is how we used to market, this is what we used to call ourselves, this is what we used to do whatever, then all of your data is, is, is skewed incorrectly. So the, all of these 
I would recommend that you set up. They're, they're literally, it's, it's step by step. People, you know, who viewed at least three seconds of your video, people who viewed at least 10 seconds of your video, people that watch 25%, and go through these. It can take about 30 minutes to set them up. It's literally a couple clicks to set up just a custom audience. You need to set up every single one, even if you don't think you're gonna use it. So then that way in six months you go, like, man, we've been putting out a lot of video content, let's run video ads. Okay, well now the data for your ads is there as opposed to let's start, you know, running ads based on off, off our videos. Go in there and create the custom audiences and from that point forward, the data will keep changing based off of what's happening. As your videos get better, the, the, the data changes. So you're saying that Create the audience now, even if you don't use it, because Facebook will automatically change that data Correct. in your audience for you. Correct. You have to you have to create the custom audiences, and then from that point forward, the audiences is live. So you know, for for instance, one of them is um, people who sent a message to your page. If if I set up my my uh, custom audience now, people who send me messages, but nobody sends me messages for a year, and then somebody sends me a message, okay, well that person will then get added into somebody who sends you messages. Make sense? Can you have unlimited number? Unlimited amount of custom audiences, unlimited amount of lookalike audiences. These are the basic ones, not just because I'm calling them basic, like those are your options. Like I'm telling you, these are the ones you need to set up. All of the other stuff, you don't need. So if you can just set up these custom audiences, then you're gonna see who's visiting your page, who's engaging with you, who's clicking on stuff, who's sending you messages, who's saving your post. If you can send an ad to somebody like that, that's probably somebody that likes your stuff. That's probably somebody that uh, you know, wants to do something at some point. Not necessarily they're gonna buy or sell a house tomorrow, but it's somebody that you know, hey, this person is very engaged. This person is watching every video. So let's maybe do a video now to where we're only sending it to the people who have watched a total of 60% of my videos, right? So you have to create this, this type of funnel, but it all starts with creating these audiences. How many custom audiences can you use per ad, and is it a good idea to throw all of them at one ad? You only want to do it based off of one audience, and that's because you're gonna have conflicting stuff. But I'm gonna kind of show you a little workaround in a second. What I would recommend is when you do a custom audience based off a year, based off six months, and based off one month. Why? You want to have three different types of, of um, custom audiences of those different dates because your data is going to change. And if you have those three, then they will talk to one another to say, hey, look, six months ago this guy was killing it, but in the last 30 days he's, you know, he has no cell phone service. I don't know. He's, he's not engaging with anything. So why would I use your budget there if he's no longer there? Do you get, does, that, does that kind of make sense? So you want to set up a year six months and a month for your custom audiences. The process is the same. Create, engagement, those ones, engage with the post, 365, go back. Create, engagement, uh, 180, yeah? Yeah, Jonathan, is it correct that the email, in your data, which we've done in the past, is really looking for the email to see if the email they need to log on to Facebook? Like I've done 30,000 emails that my business has, and I get 8,000 people to give me an AOL, and maybe they need their Gmail to log in. Is that out of finding them? I want to answer this in the most ethical way. Um, you. you Yes and no. So yes, if you put in incorrect emails, obviously those aren't going to work. The question is, it doesn't have to be the email that they use on Facebook. The answer technically is yes. However, since you're doing all of these other criteria, Facebook, they own the audience network. So if they're doing ads, or excuse me, if they're doing activities in other places outside of Facebook, it's still going to be captured within that. So if they log into their email at some point and then go on whatever page, I don't want to say any pages, but if they go to somebody's page, it'll still capture them that way. So it's, it's a live list. Remember, it's going to keep adding to say, hey, she put in those 100, for whatever reason, they didn't do anything in the last year, but all of a sudden, those people are going to go. So they'll add them into it. So I'm gonna keep going. If you again, if you create the lookalike audience, um, you, you know, base it off of the the different times. You also want to base it off of the different percentages. And I know you're saying, man, these are a lot of audiences 
content I got to create. These are the best things that you need to do to, to run effective ads, which I'm going to show you. So you had your time and you want to do it by percentage. Who's the top 10%? Who's the top 5%? The one that I like to use is the top 1%. If you download a, 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 a client list and then go back into Facebook and say, show ads to the top 1% of my clients, um, you know, those are going to go to the people that you like, know, trust. You guys are, you know, best friends. I'm going to keep going. Custom audience with lifetime value. Now, this is a game changer for Facebook, and it's really a game changer just for ads in general because you can now assign a value to said person. For instance, if this whole side of the room are my past clients, but I only like this table, I'm now going to say, I'm still gonna upload all of them, but I'm now gonna say, these are the people that are just like me. We do the same things, we like the same things. I wanna work with these types of people. You can now assign an LTV, a lifetime value, to that said person or this group, so that way your ad or and your budget is going to the people that want to work with you and you want to work with them. Now, what a lot of people do is they get the 100, they get the 100 past clients, they say, I only like these 10, so I'm not gonna include the other 90, because I hate that person. I would never want to do another transaction with them. If you don't, if you don't put that information into Facebook, then they don't know, and your ad now goes to everybody and all of their attributes. So you need to make sure that you're not not putting people uh, in because of, of whatever reason, you just need to give them a lower lifetime value score, right? And their lifetime value score is it's, it's solely based off of, it's, it's solely based off of you. So, you know, if we scroll down, you can see some things that, for me, those are lifetime value scores and some those are some of the things that work. For you, it may be drastically different. If I put in here, um, uh, a, a score, and these are all athletes for whatever, I don't know why I said athletes, I don't work with any athletes, but if I did, if these are all athletes and I gave them a score of 10, um, it's going to say, hey, he, he likes people that are buying and selling houses, they're athletic, these are the things that they do, and these are the people that he did work with them, so at some point we're going to try and basically skew them into this group, but we're not going to waste your budget on those people, we're going to uh, put it to the people that we want. Does that make sense? There is a new thing called uh, uh, analytics and testing. It's going to say, if you don't know what this means, they answer your questions. How much impact are my ads going to have on my business? What campaigns cause the lowest cost of conversion? How much impact will my uh, Facebook ads have on my brand? Uh, those are questions that get asked a lot of time and they'll, they'll get answered there. My next slide is my analytics, okay? And if you can see your own analytics, you can run better ads, right? You don't want to run ads based off of the old way of show my ads to people that are most likely to just buy a house. And yeah, that was great because it was easy, but you're showing it to everybody. You want to show your ads to, if I, I have 58.2% of people that are going through my page are female, then that's probably a demographic for whatever reason is working better for me. Uh, uh, you know, something that's a, a, a little alarming is I only have 4% of people over the age of 65 that are actually engaging and looking and whatnot at my, at my, at my ads. That's probably a, an audience that's not gonna do well for me. So why would I spend my budget to something that I know that's not gonna do well for me?